Hi, it's Peter here. I've gotten a lot of questions about OM1 camera lately. Of course, it's a new camera and people are interested in the features and how it works and, and certain things that have changed and have this thing changed and all that. And, and then some features, how do, how do they work? I made a video that you can watch it from there where I walk through all my settings that I have and some that I don't use but might be useful for you. So you might want to watch that video. I'll put a link to the description to that video also. But before we get into those questions and my comments about that, a few things about OM1 now that I have used it for about a month, not, yeah, three weeks maybe. First the demo version, then, then I got my own. But one thing is the menu system. It's a lot better than the old one. But of course, when you are so used to using the old system, because the way to navigate, you use a bit different uh, buttons and, and dials to do it. And that is something that I need to get used to. I already have because the other day I was playing around with the M1 Mark III and I already pushed the wrong buttons when I was trying to navigate that menu. So it will be quite quickly that you get used to it. And like I said, I did get two OM1s and the reason is that I still was using as my professional camera the M1 Mark II. Nothing wrong with the camera. It's not that but when you have two different types of menu system, two different layouts of buttons, it's not the most convenient way when you're using two cameras, let's say in a venue, for example, which I hope they are start arranging again after everything gets better with the COVID. Having two cameras that work exactly the same makes everything so much easier. And of course, as a professional, I need to upgrade my gear every now and then just to be on the safe side. Even though my E1 Mark II works perfectly, it's still quite an old camera for professional work. That's why I wanted to have the new ones. But let's get into the another thing that is something that is a bit different. And that's the AF point system. It used to be so that I used the small AF point and the slightly larger, and then I could, you know, move it around. Now the way it works, you select the area which inside you have the small point. If there is a way to make it bigger, then please let me know. And I mean the single autofocus point. I Maybe I missed something, but if, if there is a way, please let me know. It's not a bad system. It's just works a bit differently and I need to get used to it because when I uh, choose a bigger, larger area, the small point is moving inside that area to different places of that area. And that might not be the one that I need. In that case, I also can use the single autofocus point. But it's some slightly different and, and that is something that you might find uh, not hard but but different and it get it needs to be used so that I can get familiar with the way it works. It works perfectly, no problem with that. And I will also show some images later in this video, but now some of the questions that you've been asking. And the first one is about this CAF sensitivity. This has been before in cameras, but for some reason now it's been a common question at how does the sensitivity work and what's the logic in there? There are five different levels from plus two to minus two. And of course there's the zero, which means that it's kind of like between those two, obviously. If you have a subject that moves predictably, so that let's say like a flying bird that is just flying by, then use a number that is minus, let's say minus two, for example it will focus as effectively as it does with any of these settings. The only difference is that it, if you miss the bird from that area, it might not grab the area that fast from the background. But of course, if you're using the subject recognition, then this might not be a problem. But it's still a good thing. It, if there is another bird or something else, it might not grab that bird that easily. If you have it on more sensitivity, it might switch them more quickly. So if, but if you have a really fast moving object or subject that is moving unpredictably to different, you know, all over the place, then having it to be more sensitive works better. So if you have, let's say like a hockey player, for example, if you're shooting sports and, and that enters to the screen really fast, then to have it on plus two, it might grab it more quickly. But then when you're following a player, minus two might be a bit better. So it doesn't grab the other players or the focus doesn't grab that. So it's a good feature, but you need to figure out the best uh, thing for you because we all are a bit different and might want to burn different things. And that's why it's very good that the sensitivity dial or the 
ability to adjust the sensitivity is there. So you might want to try for yourself which works best for you. But these are the principles that how it works. And the second question is also about AF. Because the subject recognition AI works a bit differently with the focusing system than it did with uh, EM1X. On EM1X you needed to have this uh, CAF plus tracking on and then you had the subject recognition and then it would track. On OM1 you don't need to put the tracking on, just CAF and the subject recognition and it will find the subject in the area that you have chosen the focus to work. That's where it finds it, but if the bird for example flies out of that focus area the tracking will follow as long as you have the shutter button halfway pressed. If you lift your finger from the shutter button or if you're using the back button focus AF on button then it will lose it if it's not inside that focus area that you have chosen. But once it's back there you can or, or the camera finds it. So it works a bit different from EM1X. If you have the X then this one or the own one works a bit better easily. You don't need to put the CAF plus tracking on. You don't need that on OM1. Just CAF. I hope that cleared that because there's been some misunderstanding and some problems with that because it works a bit different from X. Then there has been a lot of questions about the image quality and what has actually been said. What OMDS has informed and in their videos and everything they've said mainly about to stop improvement in ISO performance. I know that there has been some text on their videos where it says to, to, uh, to stop improvement in noise reduction and that's not exactly the way it is. It's to stop better ISO performance is the right phrase to say because when you look at these images there is not much difference in noise but there is a big difference in how the image holds together. The left one is OM1 and the right one is EM1 Mark III and I showed this same thing in this video where I compared the EM1 Mark III to OM1 and its high ISO performance. As you can clearly see the OM1 image is a lot lot better. And here is an important thing that when we talk about the two to stop better ISO performance. What it means to me is that I can use 25600 which I know wasn't able to use in EM1 Mark III and that alone is the two stop better performance. I can use two stop higher ISO. It doesn't mean that if I had uh, M1 Mark uh, 3 at ISO 6400 and then compared to ISO 25600, the ISO 6400 from M1 Mark 3 looks a bit better, but the 25600 is usable on OM1 and I can totally use it. And I will show some examples what I did when I was out shooting with the camera with high ISO. Let's first talk about the image quality in handheld high-res shot, which has improved also. And the reason that it's better is that it's faster. The camera is so much faster that it can do two, time, two and a half times faster the image, which means better image quality, better uh, ability to, to work with if there is movement in the, in the uh, image. If you want to learn more about the difference in quality, check out this Rob Trex video because he made a good video about how the handheld high-res shot works in both cameras and how much better it is in OM1. Go and check out. I will also put a link to his video in the description of this video. But let's continue. I have enjoyed urban photography after darks with OM1. And here are some images that I've made on my walks. And here's one more example. This is a good example what I mean that the image holds together. This is a 25,600 ISO image and you can clearly see that the background is nice and smooth. Of course there's noise but actually the noise doesn't look that bad. It's kind of like a retro feeling and of course the editing that I did. It's an original image is uh, bl uh, not black and white but color image and then I made it black and white in Lightroom and did some tricks with the image editing. And if we look at the background, I think it looks nice. Character of the noise isn't that bad. This is what I mean when I can use 25,600 
compared to 6400 that I did on EM1 Mark III. And that's a huge difference in everyday photography. And that's, is, I think, the main thing. It, how, it doesn't matter if you're doing the lab test and, and photographing targets. It's nonsense. Only thing that matters is what you can do it with out there when you're photographing and what are the results. That's the main thing that matters. And for me, it is two stops better in that sense that I can use the 25,600 ISO. And then there's been a lot of questions about the availability of the camera. And that is something, unfortunately, I cannot tell you when you will get your, if you have pre-ordered it and when it will be in stock again. The demand has been really high and unfortunately, everyone has not gotten their camera yet, even though they have pre-ordered it. And sorry to say that you have to wait, but I, I can assure you it's a worth the wait. The camera is magnificent. If that's any <laughs> help, I know that when the camera is magnificent, you want it right away, but it's worth waiting for. The, the camera is, is magnificent, at least. That's my impression from, from the month's use that I have it. And if you are planning on getting it and haven't gotten around to it, the best way is to go to the local OM system web shop and click this link and give your email to them and then they will send a notification email to you when it's available. I hope these questions cleared some of the things that you've been wondering about. And if you want to learn more about the camera, here are some more videos about OM-1. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.